second last question and then I think I will close the Q&A because I have some announcement. Please, if you could identify yourself also in which organization. Absolutely. My name is Lori Cardoza-Moore and I am a special envoy for the World Council of Independent Christian Churches. We have heard about the persecution of Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, and Yazidis today. However, none of us, none of the distinguished panelists, mentioned the rise of global genocidal anti-Semitism that is not only on the rise around the world, but even in the Middle East. There was no mention of the recent attacks by Palestinians against Jews in Israel or the recent missile attacks against Israel from Hamas during the war in Israel this past summer. The Palestinian Authority Hamas leaders are calling to make Israel Judenrein or Jew free. And if matters couldn't have been made worse, the so-called legitimate partner for peace is inciting various attacks against Israeli citizens. In the words of His Holiness, the late John Paul, Pope John Paul, to this day, Auschwitz does not cease to admonish, reminding us that anti-Semitism is a great sin against humanity, that all racial hatred inevitably leads to the trampling of human dignity. If we do not address this issue of genocidal anti-Semitism and the rise thereof, it will be a scourge on all of humanity. My question for the panelists in this incredible opportunity, this summit that is coming up, and in future meetings, how will you address the rise of global genocidal anti-Semitism? Thank you so much for this question about genocidal anti-Semitism. And for the first questions, on, uh, this panel has not uh, spoken enough on the, ri on the, uh, on the rise of anti-Semitism. I think, uh, I, think I, w I would agree to uh, our last questions. Um, sufferings is sufferings from the Palestinian side, from the Israeli, from the... And, uh, it's also the responsibility of governments, and I say it loud and clear in this, in this house, it's also the responsibility of government not to invade other countries and not to destroy the structure of country. We have to look at the roots. We have to look at the roots of the problem. Again, I was the deputy coordinator in Palestine, living five years in Gaza and in East Jerusalem. Um, afterwards, I went to Iraq. So um, people of uh, goodwill, all, all of us, we have to unite and especially educate our youth through media, through education, and uh, try to help those terrible situations which often governments have created. I just wanted to comment, uh, granted that stateless ones live inside of states, so it's something that we have to look at. And I would also say that, yes, there is a problem with global anti-Semitism, but there's also um, Arabs or Semites, and there's a global anti-Semitism against Arabs. I think the mistake we make is to focus on one. We can't do that. From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews we must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends. For if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state, that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge. But anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over one billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. If there's one thing history has taught the Jewish people, a 
place they can go in time of need is essential, and Israel fulfills that role. But the need for a Jewish state is not limited to being only a refuge for Jews. Jewish tradition in Israel grants full rights for women and people of all races, faiths, and gender. This tradition is what often makes Israel among the first countries to send doctors and field hospitals to any place where a natural disaster occurs, utilizing their medical advances to save lives worldwide. Muslims, Christians, and people of every faith or those of no faith have the freedom to worship or not worship as they choose. For Muslims, the Jewish state goes out of its way to provide this freedom. For example, Every Israeli university gives students the option of deferring their exams during the month of Ramadan. The Knesset calls off all sessions at sunset during Ramadan to ensure that Muslim Knesset members can break their fasts with the traditional iftar dinner. In an open and democratic manner, opportunities for education, advancement, and careers exist for all citizens in the Jewish state. Sadly, such rights and opportunities do not exist in any of the Muslim Arab states. For example, in neighboring Jordan, Jews cannot become citizens. And in Saudi Arabia, no non-Muslim can become a citizen. Saying that Israel must cease to exist as a Jewish state while accepting that other countries define themselves as Muslim is pure hypocrisy. In most of these countries, no rights exist for non-Muslims, women, and the LGBT community. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part do your research, and do what you can to make a difference. Because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at pjtn.org.